Hello. This is a Claiborne LSAT Logic Games video. What we're going to do here is focus on the setup of a standard uh, sequencing logic game, a strict sequencing game to be specific, and to show you the power of what we call the decision tree process in which we generate the diagrams in advance, the, the game boards that you'll need so that you can see that play out in the question. So this, as uh, the video indicates, is from prep test 87.2. So you wanna have that in front of you here. Uh, we are observant to LSAC's copyright, so I'm not even gonna quote exact uh, parts or not read out the whole uh, game and the rules to you. Um, but so you wanna have 87 and the second logic game in front of you. And then let's go and see what it presents to us. We of course have what I would call a strict sequencing game here. And I call it that because unlike loose sequencing, the rules are strict. That is, they're more restricted. They give you more detail than simply how the players or the elements are related to each other. So whether you call this ordering or, or linear, we tend to use the language of sequencing with the idea of strict bringing together the concept that, that there is more restriction here uh, and therefore more inferences, right? That's an important key in this case. All right, so we've got one through five here. I'm drawing this out on the Zoom whiteboard. You can do it a lot faster on your own page, but what I want you to see here is my thought process kind of unfolding as I draw out the game. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the block that's available to us because nothing is more powerful in an LSAT logic game than a block of elements or players. That is, in the case of sequencing, two players that must be immediately next to each other. In this case, that's the fast food and the sportswear commercials. Now, granted, it doesn't say in which order those two are, but what we're gonna do is start the block at the far left and generate all the possibilities around that. And then we're gonna gradually move it to the far right. This is what you always wanna do if you encounter a block on a sequencing game. Don't just say, oh, well, that's nice. Here are the places that it could go relative to the other players. No, put it in there. Establish a spot for it on the far left and move it to the far right to generate all the ways that the game can be arranged. Now, this little handle that I've driven here just indicates that fast food and sportswear could go in either direction. All right now, once we've locked those in, we have uh, the other rules to take into account. We have P before G, and we also know that the S is before the T, the truck in this case, which obviously it is if S is, is in this position, but that will be more relevant when we come to, to later. So really the only thing that remains for this first game board is that P is before G. Now again, here's a crucial inflection point. Most logic games test takers would just write down, okay, P before G, write it out to the side. But why not explore the limited possibilities for the, the ways that P could be before G? There's only three ways that that can happen in this scenario. P and G are either three and four, or they're three and five, or they're four and five. There's literally nothing else that can happen, again, assuming that the FS slash SF block is in one of the first two positions. Right, now notice that in all of these cases, the T falls into place because there's only one place left. It's fifth, and then it's fourth, and then it's third. And we have generated three possibilities for how the game can actually play out, not hypothetically, but concretely, with the only variability being that handle on number one and two, the possibility that F and F, F and S, excuse me, could uh, change places. All right, now that might seem like we're going to get a lot of game boards here, but there's already hints that that's not the case. Chiefly the fact that when we move F and S across, they have to still be before T, so they can't go all the way to the right. And as they move across, they're going to limit T's position. In other words, T here can only be four or five. All right now, notice, think about P and G here. Well, we then know that 
that P, they could be one and four or one and five or four and five, but that would crowd out T. So it's never going to be the case that P and G are four and five in this scenario where F and S are two and three. We have to find a place for T after the FS block. Now notice that as long as G is after P as it's supposed to be, and as it is here in this example, it doesn't matter whether G or T come first. P is before G, S is before T, we're good to go. And that's actually the only way that this scenario can play out if F and S are in two and three. So you may be seeing already that we're really only gonna need one more game board here because putting FS in three, four is going to force T as far right as it can possibly go. And therefore there's no more outcomes. P and G, P before G follow naturally or fall naturally into place. And we have our fifth example. In only five examples with a little bit of variability with handles, we have captured exhaustively everything that can happen in this game. So in these videos, we actually are just going to simply set up logic games for you. We're not going to go through the questions because particularly in this kind of situation that we would call sort of a high yield situation, the questions fall like dominoes for the most part. You might still have to work out one or two possibilities, but with this kind of mastery of what's happening in the game, it's almost impossible for them to stump you unless you simply misread something. So in some, in, in five examples, we've got the, the exhaustive reality of what can happen in this game. It's a beautiful setup. It's a high yield game produced by a kind of a decision tree process of thinking. That is, is it here or is it here or is it here? We go through different branches of the tree and we produce these game boards as a result. It's an incredibly powerful way to approach the logic game section. And I hope this video has helped you see exactly how powerful it can be and how it might apply to the questions in this particular game.